time I reached the cell, I knew they had me. I was now in the lion's den, and I had a bad feeling I was going to be there for a while. But what a switch. Ten days ago, I was a Navy pilot. I was invincible. Nothing could touch me. Now did I end up kissing the shoes of these North Vietnam dogs? Shot down. I don't remember that part all too well. It happened fast. I dropped my load on the target, dead on. Then I swung back around due east back to the carrier, and the anti-aircraft guns had my right wing cut nearly all the way off before I completed the turn. Once I realized my baby wasn't going to fly anymore, I concentrated on getting out of the damn thing safely. I managed to quit Mayday into the radio, then pulled the seat firing handle located between my legs. Big mistake there. Had my left hand still on the joystick when I pulled the lever. My glove got caught under the trigger and my shoulder was nearly shattered while it ripped in two and left my hand bare. I couldn't have been too far from the ground by the time I ejected. I remember looking up and seeing grass four or five times before my parachute opened. Now there's an emergency landing that didn't go too well. I hit the ground about half a second after the parachute hit the sky and I began to wonder if I should have just kept the parachute in and not draw so much attention. Landed on my right shoulder, thank God and undid the clasp. I checked myself over while I was still lying down, and the first thing I noticed was that the toes on my right foot were scratching the side of my shin. I couldn't even feel it yet. The civilians beat me up pretty good and tore my clothes to shreds before the military got to me. Can't say I blame them. A gook landing in LA probably wouldn't fare too well either. The first thing the soldiers did was take me to a doctor. I remember running my right hand down my left arm trying to tell him to pull it back into the right place, but he didn't speak English. He shot me full of something that put me up for a long time. Then they let me hear. Get dressed. You're going to meet with someone important. I dressed as fast as I could, clutching to the hope that they had finally realized who they had captured, and someone from the U.S. made an offer for me. I figured I was on my way to talk with the superior officer about the deal. I was led out of my cell, down the hallway to another room. There was a table inside, covered, and a chair across from it. I couldn't tell if the man sitting behind the desk was a superior officer or not. It's policy to remove their ranking and presence of a prisoner. Sit. Hello, Mr. Winters. May I express how excited we all were at the news of your arrival. I'm sure your wife Marion and your son Taylor will also be glad to know you will be safely on the ground from now on. I didn't say a word. He was just trying to get to me. I didn't know what the purpose of this visit was, but I wasn't going to play this guy's game. A celebrity like you has such a busy schedule. We're thankful that we could be included. Oh my Jesus, he's got the magazine. August 1965, with my face plastered all over the cover like stink on a skunk. The story inside detailed my family life and how Marion feels about being married to a fighter pilot. She never worried about me. I'd been flying for six years now. It was all in those pages, and he knew it now, too. Mr. Winters, the only man we would rather have caught than you, is Lyndon B. Johnson. But enough introduction. You are a criminal under our care, and we intend to use your knowledge to our advantage. Tell us, where is the Ticonderoga stationed? The Ticonderoga was the name of the aircraft carrier I was stationed on, and I'd be damned if I was going to tell him where it was. I'm not familiar with that vessel. It says here that you'll be stationed on the Ticonderoga until December 1967. It sounds to me, Mr. Winters, as if you are lying. And lack of cooperation is something I cannot stand. Take him away. This was how a prisoner of war lived. They ask you a question, and... Watch! You wash your ball whips! 
I was in unspeakable pain and semi-conscious. I couldn't tell what still worked or even what was still attached. For an hour, I just lied on the floor trying to make my parts move. Eventually, I sat myself up against the wall. I sat there a long time, fading in and out of sleep. The next step was stand. I did manage to get to the bucket of water, 